William the First was released into Rise of Kingdoms over three years ago, and that is really, really shocking since even now in 2023, you'll notice William the First is still used on the open field extremely often because he is an extremely powerful commander. So today, I will be discussing William the First. I'll go over his skills, which ones are the best to unlock, are there any skills you should skip, why he's actually so good since there are some really small things in his kit that bring him amazing potential, and then best pairs for him, which commanders currently in this meta work extremely well with him, and finally, is he worth the investment and does he really still hold that much meta potential? Or in the future, will we be seeing William sitting on the bench? So if you want to know more about William the first and if he's got really good potential and if you should still invest in him, you definitely want to check out the rest of the video. Now let's begin by discussing William's skills. And the first thing is his active skill, Hidden Bloodline. And this is an active skill with a rage requirement of 1000 that deals damage up to three targets in a forward facing rectangle area. This rectangle area is actually quite small, but it is still decently sized to the point where you will at least be able to hit at least two people in big murder balls. So don't worry about it. Often if it's a smaller murder ball fight, you will notice he does miss a little bit. But even in Canyon and Ark of Osiris, you'll notice that the rectangle AoE still does get enough value for it to be worth it. His damage factor goes up to 1,500 when the skill is maxed. And then damage dealt to each target is reduced by 15%. That is typical with pretty much every AoE in the game. The next part of his active skill, attack troops extra skill damage buffs cannot take effect. And he reduces their march speed by 30% for 3 seconds. Those are two really good debuffs which I will go into a little bit later. But the march speed, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. And that march speed is a really, really powerful AoE debuff. I think he is one of, if not the only commanders in the game with an AoE march speed reduction. Ethelfled might have one, but I think hers is passive. So... He really does have a nice march speed reduction. It is really, really powerful, especially if you're running him as a support commander. You'll notice that march speed reduction allows you to catch up to targets you're trying to hit quite a bit more. Then his second skill, he gains 20% increased attack and 15% march speed, which is really, really nice. 15% march speed is a lot of total march speed. You'll notice that's going to get him out of a lot of sticky situations. And then also, whenever he's outside of Alliance territory, he gains an extra 10% all damage. That is a really, really nice boost that's going to apply whenever you're outside of Alliance territory. So, for example, whenever you're doing Olympia, Ark of Osiris, Sunset Canyon, Lost Canyon, all those game modes, he's going to work quite well in since he does get a nice all damage boost. And obviously, whenever you're fighting out of territory, possibly just after a pass opens, you're going to notice he does perform extremely well. His third skill is pretty much just a damage skill. Whenever is on the map, cavalry units led by this commander gain 20% increased attack, which is nice. And then all of his normal attacks have a 10% chance to inflict direct damage to the target. Damage factor 800. If the target is surrounded, it will take extra damage. The damage factor is actually equal to the number of targets surrounding the enemy times 80 maximum of five enemies. So in the short there, he basically can deal up to 1,200 direct damage factor as a instant proc if you are surrounding the target with five marchers. And this will go down by 80 until you reach like one march where I think at the minimum he'll do 880 here because I think it's impossible to not swarm the target with at least one march unless surrounded means at least two marches. So he'll do 960 damage, which is really, really strong for an instant proc. Even if he is only part of a too much murder ball, that 960 instant damage is almost a thousand. So that is really, really decent. You're going to notice that's going to bring up your trades quite a bit and it's nothing to laugh at. I actually really, really like that. Plus it seems here it does not have a cooldown though. I think that all instant damage things I have an inbuilt cooldown of like five seconds, which they don't, they might not write sometimes. So it might have a five second cooldown. Not 100% sure on that, but I think that is the case. Then his fourth skill, whenever he uses Hidden Bloodline, which is his active skill, and it hits a target, this commander's troops gain 20% increased defense on three seconds. So that is a nice boost to give yourself on the active skill. It's kind of just buffing the active skill there. But this only applies to when you hit one target. If you hit two or more targets, so if you hit up to three targets, all the commander's troops, so that means including his, like, five, if you have five marches with William, every single one is actually going to gain 20% increased defense. And then also all nearby allied troops also gain 20% increased defense. And then every single troop inside of his murder ball pretty much gains 50 rage per second for three seconds. I don't know if there is a limit to what nearby allied troops means. It could literally mean every single allied troop that's nearby. I doubt so. I'm sure there's a limit on this. But the 50 extra rage increase to your marches is really, really strong. I'm pretty sure that is better than Epic Joan of Arc. It is pretty much like giving Cyrus' expertise to everyone in your murder ball. So that is a really, really powerful buff. And the good thing about this skill is actually that you don't have to max the skill to get the 50 rage. Yes, you're missing out on 10% defense, but the rage generation here is definitely the most powerful part of it. 
then his expertise is pretty much just an increase of his third skill where now he can deal up to 1,500 damage factor instead of 1,200, increases the normal damage factor without surrounding to 1,000, and then also increases the surrounding damage factor by up to 100 per time he surrounds it. So 1,500 is the max there. So his expertise is not necessarily necessary, but it is still a powerful thing to have. It's going to increase your damage factor by around 300. Not too amazing, but it's better than nothing. He also does gain actually an extra 10% attack for what that's worth. Now, out of his skills, what are his best skills? Where I think that with William, you don't need a heavy investment on him. You could just go 5, 5, 5, 1, and that would be perfectly fine. His expertise is not 100% needed in his kit. And his fourth skill really benefits fully from that rage gain rather than the defense. So you don't truly need to level that up especially since the rage gain per second applies even if the skill is level one. So, so you don't necessarily need to get that fourth skill. You'll be pretty good with just the fourth skill level one. And then all these other skills at just five is going to do extremely well. You'll have all these active skill benefits. You'll have a bunch of stats here, especially march with nor damage. And then you'll have a bunch of damage on that third skill. So you're going to notice he will perform quite well with a cheaper investment. His expertise is not needed, but it is not bad. It's not like you don't have to go and get his expertise. If you want to get his expertise, it's going to add to his kit, but it's not going to add too much where I would say it's worth it for most players. For most players, like 99% of players, 5551 is a really good spot for him, especially if you're new to Season of Conquest, you will notice that 5551 is going to be really nice while you go and invest in other commanders. Now that we've gotten all of William's active skill and skill stuff out of the way, why is he still such a meta-dominating cavalry commander? And the first reason is definitely related to that active skill, skill damage debuff. And the reason this is so strong is because it's literally blocking the opponent from gaining extra skill damage buffs. It's not giving a hard set fixed number. It is blocking up to an infinite number. And he is literally the only commander in the game currently to do this. Like, even if we look at meta commanders such as Nevsky, Nevsky cannot go above a 45% defense reduction. It is literally impossible. But William's skill damage debuff can scale up to literally infinite. If they added a commander into the game that gains infinite skill damage and William places that skill damage debuff on the opponent, he is debuffing them for infinite skill damage reduction. That is literally how powerful it is. So it scales to infinity. It is not a hard fixed debuff and it can move with the meta. He is the only commander in the game, to my knowledge, that can do this, which is definitely one reason why he has stayed so powerful in the meta and continues to be such a strong commander since his debuff cannot ever become weaker, even though it is an active skill debuff since it is blocking a part of a commander's kit. Plus, his march to reduction is nice. That's not necessarily why he's still meta. Also, another thing that keeps him meta, though, is the AoE, because the AoE with the debuff is really strong, dealing area of effect damage with such a potent debuff that scales infinitely, definitely keeps him in a strong, strong position. Another thing that is really good about him is he has a rage engine for your whole entire murder ball. It is really difficult to replace that. Yes, Joan of Arc Prime can give your murder ball a rage engine as well, but it's only a 20 rage for three seconds. So yes, that is nice, but William is 50 rage for three seconds, plus it's in a passive skill slot. So to my knowledge, that will stack with Joan of Arc skill as well. So that is really, really strong. He's going to stack with other commanders who give rage. So Cyrus will stack with him. Joan of Arc will stack with him. Any commander that's giving rage boost will stack with William. And this is going to apply to your whole entire murder ball. Plus, the way it triggers is by dealing damage. So you can somehow have control over that if you want to angle him in specific ways to get that AoE to fire. You'll notice that he's going to be able to buff your whole entire murder ball, which is absolutely ridiculous. And it is a really, really strong buff. The defense is not necessarily needed, but the rage is definitely the strongest part of his kit. The final reason I say he's so meta dominating is he's a cheap investment. You don't have to take him very far. You just have to get a 5551 five, William, and he's going to be pretty much 95% of his value, I would say. Literally 95%. 10% defense is nice, not necessarily needed. 300 damage factor is almost useless and not worth 310 gold heads. So you'll see that he's going to be extremely powerful at just 5551, five, where he's giving a murder ball a whole entire 150 rage per commander. He's debuffing the opponents and dealing AoE damage, plus he's got his own stats to sustain himself. It will make just such a powerful commander. Now that we know all about William's skills and we can see that he's lacking a lot of defensive stats, what would his best commander pairs be? And I think that the first thing to note here is he will never ever be a primary. He is just way too squishy for that and he's lacking on the skill tree, which I think he really needs. And that's why I would say his current best meta pair is definitely with Nevsky. Nevsky is in some ways better with William than he is with Joan, since Houcha being works extremely well with Joan. So Nevsky with William, really, really nice. Nevsky is bringing a lot of march speed, which allows you to pin down on targets more often, and you can somehow use William somewhat like a Saladin, 
which means that since Nevsky is fast and William already has more march speed, you're getting up to a 35% permanent march speed increase, and you can just pin down on people, drop William's active skill on them, make them run slower, and then just annihilate their march. So William with Nevsky, I really, really like it. Plus, Nevsky is obviously a tanky commander with skill damage bonuses, which means that his AoE is going to benefit even more, being able to deal a ton more damage and almost bring it up to that meta standard due to the fact of Nevsky's extra skill damage bonuses. Also, William can work with Hao Chebing and Zhang Yu. Just keep in mind, these commanders are much more squishy. I will say in one thing, though, Hao Chebing has a much faster rage cycle than Nevsky, which I do like with William. You definitely want that rage cycle with William to get that active skill flowing, and then also start to get that rage increase from his fourth skill for every march. You kind of want to get that active skill off as soon as possible, and that's where Hao Chebing and Zhang Yu do really excel, but keep in mind, they are much squishy, and if they do get hit, you're going to notice they're going to die really, really quickly. They may not trade bad, but they are going to pretty much lose very fast and you'll notice that this march doesn't have nearly as much field sustainability plus to get how chapping's march but he has to be outside of alliance territory so you won't be able to stick onto opponents as hard as you would if you had nevsky since nevsky definitely has a much easier to access and stronger march speed increase than how chapping which definitely is going to allow him to stick onto opponents a little bit more. Other than that, I wouldn't really recommend any other cab pairs for William. At the very, very worst, I would say you could run Saladin with him if you don't have any other options. And Saladin would be a very decent cab commander with William. Just keep in mind, though, it is an older pairing, and Saladin is starting to show his age a little bit with a commander who is still losing in some trades that he should be winning. For example, he can't beat any of the meta archers. He definitely cannot beat most of the meta infantry. And he is a commander that is definitely starting to become outdated with more and more cavalry commanders being added to the game. So unless you already have a Saladin expertise or like 5551, I wouldn't go out of your way to get him to put him with William. Now, after all of his skills and best pairs and all that stuff, is William really a good investment now as of 2023? He is over three years old and his stats are definitely lackluster compared to most modern commanders. Besides maybe his march speed, his damage is certainly lower than commanders such as Nevsky, Haochebing, even Zhang Yu has a lot higher damage than William, but I think that William still brings a lot of utility. There is no commander currently in the game like him, and he's also extremely easy to access. You can get him in the legendary chest. I said it in yesterday's video that he is literally the best commander available in the legendary chest, so if you want to get him from here, he's a really, really good option. That also does mean Heart's Desire really, really nice players to access him, and he's going to be really, really strong in this event. So if you want to be able to access him through those methods, you do have access to him like that. Plus, he's in Wheel of Fortune, which is easy to access. And on top of that, you can also get William inside of the daily special offer, which once again is a nice boost. He is arguably one of, if not the best commander available in the daily special offer. So you have a lot of ways to access William. And that's why I would say if you're willing to invest in him and you want to run him as a cavalry commander, especially behind a Nevsky or a Hauche Bing, he is actually still worth the investment. He is almost irreplaceable until like his damage becomes really outdated, his stats become really outdated. His active skill debuff is going to scale with the meta. It's never ever going to become bad. His march reduction is on par with current meta and his rage gain is actually better than most meta commanders, if not the best in the game, because if you boost up to seven troops by 50, 150 rage over the whole cycle, you're getting somewhere in the realm of a thousand rage, which is ridiculous. And that is a massive rage increase. No one in the game gives you a thousand rage increase besides William, plus he's boosting your allies. So I would say William is still actually worth the investment. If you want at least three marches in your murder ball and you want one of them to be or two of them to be a cav march, William is certainly an option. If you want two cav marches in total, he is a must invest. There is no way around it. If you want to run two cav marches, you run something like a Hatch having with a Joan and Nevsky with a William and you're pretty much just set because William is so strong and obviously those other three commanders are meta. So even for a three-year-old commander, I think he's still going to hold a lot of meta potential, especially with his scaling debuff that goes up infinitely and also due to him being extremely accessible and also still works extremely well in large murder balls, I would say William is not going to be replaced anytime soon. Plus, we just had Cav commanders and I would say that he's still going to be in the meta for at least the next year or two. And since he's not a heavy investment, I would say he's certainly worth it. So if you want to invest in William, I certainly do recommend it. Now that I've finished discussing William, I'd like to know your opinions on William. Do you think he is a powerful open field commander? Or is he a commander that is starting to become outdated and may even need to be replaced? So if you have any opinions on William, you think I'm completely right or completely wrong, let me know in the comments. And if you have any questions about William or anything Rise of Kingdoms related, 
Also, let me know in the comments because a lot of your comments actually end up giving me video ideas. For example, my early game commanders video was made based on someone asking me a comment. What do you think about the early game commanders? What are the best pairs? And stuff like that really, even those small comments, help me come up with video ideas to put out there to help inform the Rise of Kingdoms player base. So if you have any video ideas, you have any questions, or you just want to tell me about William, let me know in the comments down below. Now, I just want to say thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.